Hello everyone and welcome to another ship build guide for Starfield. I'm your host, Colors Fade. The ship I'm bringing you today is called the Daybreak. This ship comes to us courtesy of Reddit user Probalt and I want to make sure that they get 100% credit for this design. I saw this ship on their Reddit thread. I thought it was absolutely fantastic and I decided to try and build it and I made a few modifications along the way as Han Solo once said about the YT-1300. As Probalt notes in the Reddit thread, this ship is an A-class ship, is not that great, the stats aren't that good, and the maneuverability is kind of low, but once you get access to B-class parts, this ship really takes off, and that is what I'm presenting this as, a B-class ship. Once you get some access to some B-class engines and a couple other components, this ship is really awesome. It looks fantastic. It is super fun. And as I will show you in some of this footage, it can take on ships very easily with the weaponry. In fact, I've got more weapons than I actually need. So let's get in and talk about how to build this ship. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is where you're going to go to build this ship. You actually can't build all of it in a single shipyard. You're going to have to hop around a little bit. And the place where you actually want to do most of the building is on your very own building platform in an outpost. Now, outpost settlement building is for a completely different tutorial. But what I want to show is how you can actually do that. In your outpost, you can go to the build mode and you can build a landing pad with ship builder, which is a really big thing that you can build, but it's really cool because it gives you access to most of the ship building parts. Now there's a caveat to this and I wanna be very clear about what we're talking about here. When you build this particular ship building platform, there's a little control panel on the right, the ship builder control console, which gives you the access to view and modify ships. And this will give you access to a whole lot of parts However, what's interesting here is it won't give you access to all the parts. There are some parts that are specific to certain shipyards, and that's why we're going to have to hop around and go to certain shipyards to get all this. The other thing that's really important to understand is that the shipbuilding parts that you have access to are actually determined by, I believe it's your level and your skills. So remember, you have your skills in piloting and in shipbuilding, and those can go up to rank one through four each. But then there's also your overall level. So as you play the game, you notice that you get access to certain types of guns over time. And as you get higher level, you get access to more guns that you haven't seen before, more different weapons that you haven't seen. It's the same with shipbuilding parts. As you level up, you're gonna get access to shipbuilding parts that you never saw before. Right now, I'm around level 25 in the game and these are the shipbuilding parts that I have access to and these are basically the perfect parts to put the ship together anyways. So we're going to start here. Now the next thing I want to note about this is you'll notice it says Razor Leaf on the ship name and that is because this is the Razor Leaf from the Mantis questline except I completely made a new ship. Fun fact, if you take the Razor Leaf and you double click on a component and you delete the whole entire ship and start building from scratch, the game still considers it the razor leaf of the Mantis questline, which means that when you go attack Crimson Fleet enemies, they will change their IFF signals to friendly to try to keep you from destroying them. So this is a really fun thing to do if you decide that you want to use the Mantis ship, but you want to use it as a different design. I personally love this design that Probalt came up with. I think it's fantastic. It's my favorite thing. And there's enough room for habitation modules on it that you can have all the pieces that you actually need. So there's multiple different ways to configure the habitation modules. I'm going to show you how to put this ship together and you can tweak it to your liking. Now there are multiple ways to go about building a new ship, but I find the easiest thing to do is just have an enemy ship that you've captured and delete it and start from scratch. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna double click on this thing, I'm gonna delete all the parts, and we're gonna start building. We're gonna start with the cockpit. For the cockpit, we wanna use the Viking CP220 cockpit from Stroud Eklund. Now the next thing we're gonna wanna do is add all of the habitation modules at once. So we'll click on the very back of it here and we'll go to the next habitation module. Now I'm going to use all Stroud Eklund parts for the habitation modules, but feel free to use whichever one you want. It's going to change the exterior design a little bit, but if you want to use Tayo or Nova Galactic or Hope Tech or Demos, I recommend the Demos ones. They're actually really cool, but it's however you really want to set it up. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is build a companion way right behind the cockpit. 
And this is kind of going to be the focal point of the ship here. Now on the left side and the right side, you can do this however you want to. What I've done is on the left side, I put, you go to, I put the captain's quarters here because I like to have access to a bed right there. And then on the other side, I like to have access to a living quarters for the rest of the crew. So it's going to look like that. And then the next part of the ship is the two wings and you can do whatever you want here. You can do a three by one berth here. So if you wanted to do an all in one three by one berth there, or if you wanted to do the three by one engineering bay for Demos, there's an A and a B. You can do even more living quarters if you want to. I'm just gonna experiment. I'm gonna use this engineering bay here and then I might put another living quarters over here. But do whatever you want. There's plenty of room for splots here. And that's what that looks like. This, this, here's a, here's another way to do this and a way that I've done it is to go down here and put a 1 by 12 companion way here and then you can go take one of the 2 by 1s that you want if you want something like an armory in here you could do that that's totally acceptable if you want to it looks better if you use the Stroud Eklund parts which is a huge reason why I did the Stroud Eklund parts in the beginning with my very first model and it's just because the Stroud Eklund parts um, are flush. So for instance, if you do a Stroud companion way and on the front of that, you do a Stroud two in one armory, right? That you can see how that's different. These two parts are flush right there. Whereas on this side, if you were to do the same thing over here with the Demos parts, a Demos companion way, with a Demos Armory. Notice how, as you zoom in, this isn't exactly flush. It's not sleek like this is over here. So again, it's to your taste, however you wanna do these things. Oh, and I got this, I got this a little off here because I got rid of this part here, but you get what I'm saying. And so in order to make the ship that I have in the video and in the screenshots, we're just gonna use the Stroud Eklund. But again, it's up to you, do whatever you want to. So what I have here is we have the Stroud Eklund cockpit, the CP220. We have a companion way right behind it. We have a living quarters off to its right hand side, its starboard side on the port side. We have the captain's quarters, which gives you quick access to a bed. We have two more companion ways right here to create this angle. And then we got a workshop on one side and we got a science lab on the other. It's really, everything that you still need to get through the game if you want to have your ship be kind of like your home base and it works out really well all right let's get to building the rest of this we're going to move over to the structural stuff for a little bit we're going to put portals on these front two spots right here you get nice little windows right there to look out of it's actually it actually ends up being really really cool Structurally on this side, we're gonna move down. Remember, and this is why you wanna build it at your outpost building slot, because you'll have access to a lot more parts here. We're gonna build this wing right here, and this one, so these are the Stroud caps. Now on the inside, we're gonna go up here and start using all of this stuff, the demo stuff. We're gonna use a lot of demo stuff on here. This is what kinda of ends up being really cool. So right here, you wanna get this part, the Demos wing E part, and you want to arrow over and grab it so it flips around. So the fat part is toward the window. And you're gonna do the same thing on this side. Arrow over, fat part toward the window. And then on the outside, on the interior of this big long wing, you're gonna use the same part, but you're gonna reverse it. So you're gonna have the skinny part toward the window. And we're gonna stack three of them in a row and we're gonna flip them around so that they match up. And these are gonna be where you're gonna be able to mount one of your weapon rigs on. So it's very cool. So here, skinny part towards the window, fat part matches up and like that. That gives you access to that. Now on the outside, go back over again, tons of Demos parts. You want the Demos wing, wrong part, click on. So you want this Demo wing A and then you're gonna want this Demos wing B this is also where more weapons are gonna get mounted, which is really cool. Now, for engines, this is the part where you're going to have to move the ship and you're gonna to have to go to Aquila to get all the engines that you want because we won't have access to them here. We have access to a bunch of engines, but we don't have access to the ones I want. So for now, what we're gonna do is put a white dwarf engine on it. We're gonna put one there and one there. So these are flush like that. And then we're going to start building the underside of this ship here in a second on the side here. The engines are the big thing though. You have to go to Aquila to get them at this, at least where I am at level 25. That's where we have to go to get them. All right. 
the underside of this thing. We're going to go get ourselves a lander, a, a bay. And the bay we want is this one right here. It's another Demos product. It's really nice. And then we're going to flip back up here on the underside of this and go back to the structural stuff. We want this Demo Belly 4 right there. Demos. Oh, and then there there is one other thing we're going to have to do. We're going to have to actually go to the Demos station because there is a piece of landing gear here that you can't get any other way. So on the bottom side, structurally here, we want this thing called the Demos Skeg A right there on the underside in the second slot on that wing. Now, what we would normally put right here behind the Demo Skeg is a piece of landing gear, but we don't have access to it. If we go down to gear, we don't have access to it. So for, for now, for a temporary thing, we're gonna use the Aculander gear. This is gonna come off later. It's ugly, but it's gonna serve the purpose. So we're gonna put that on there. Then there's another piece of Demos gear that goes here. It's not gear, but it's uh, structural. You're gonna want put Demos Skeg B right there. And the Demos landing gear that goes down here actually looks just like this Skeg, except it's got a couple of little flares coming out of it. It's got the landing gear coming out of it. So you end up with a nice line down the bottom of the ship. We're gonna go right here and add yet another piece of landing gear. This is all the gear you need. It's four pieces of landing gear. There you go. So. It'll look so much better when we get the Demos landing gear on it, but we don't have access to it right here, which is one of the sad things that happens in this particular game is that we don't have access to everything from our outpost build slot. I'm sure there's a mod that fixed that and I'm really tempted to use it, but I'm doing this without any mods to show you guys how you can do it. We're gonna go back over to structural and grab the Demos stuff. We want Demos spine A on the four right here at the top of these spots. And then right behind that, you want Demos Spine B. And then here, what I did on this slot, which is a little different than the original version of this, is I add this, the Demos Spine E. And this is going to get built out a little bit more as we go along. Well, actually, you can build this here on these engines. That's good. You can build on the top of them. So the Demos Spine F4, but take it and reverse it. That way you get the nice lines meeting and it tapers toward the end there. That's really cool. Now, underneath, right here in this slot, underneath this habitat, is going to be your other engine. And for now, we're just going to use the White Dwarf engines. And then it's going to be reactor time. Now, this is where we want to make sure we have a B-class reactor. And the best one we have access to is the Dog Star. And again, change that out later if you want to. Then a grav drive is going to go down below. And much like this, you know, grab whatever you want to and just make sure that you have enough of a grab drive to push the ship around. Once you have a grab drive on here, we'll get down to the last little bit of knitting. Now you can see right here, let's see what our flight errors are. Ship is missing a docker. We're going to put a docker up here and I recommend this one right here. This is the Stroud Eklund docker. We're going to want a shield, even though the game doesn't tell you that there's an error, it'll, it won't tell you there's an error but we want a B-class shield and both of these, the refresh on this one, they're both 7%, which is not as good as, is not as fast of a whole regen as this one right here, but this one is a big, huge basketball looking thing, soccer ball, it looks awful. So what I do for aesthetic purposes is I go with the inferior shield just because it looks better. And then we're gonna to want to also, in structural over here, put an equipment plate right there because we'll be mounting something right there. All right, so now we're starting to look like it. We still have a little bit of spiny stuff to do here. We have these Demos spines. So we wanna go back to spine four and then we want to do the spine B right there. And that's what the back is gonna look like right there now we now you'll notice we're still missing a couple of things we're missing fuel and cargo this says it doesn't have a fuel tank this is the only part of the whole entire ship design that i don't really like i wish we could get fuel tanks that looked a little bit different so i just put a tiny little fuel tank on here because all the rest of these are really big and stick out really far and there's nowhere else really on the ship to put a fuel tank now you could sacrifice there's there's room here on the left and the right you could put fuel tanks there but notice we only have 280 cargo right now and we're, we're about to remedy that. This is a temporary solution what we're doing because what you really want to do to get the really huge cargo pieces is you have to attach them from the side and the, this engine won't ele allow you to attach anything from the side. Remember, we're going to go get some better B-class engines in Aquila here in a little bit. So right now, all we're going to do 
to take space and is is this thing right here this this is fine you can leave these on there and i actually used these on uh the a-class version of oh no wait a minute here we go these are the ones you want the galleons can actually stick on there they don't have to stick sideways okay cool we're gonna put those on there so we're gonna see how much the game complains now you can see right now our mobility just dropped down to 65. That's why I was saying, if you're going to make an A-class version of this ship, you need to make it with a lot less cargo so that you have some mobility. Because again, the engines you have access to just aren't the best. But by the time we get the B-class engines on here, even with these cargo slots, you're still going to have the maximum of 100 mobility and you, you've got more than enough firepower. So. so we have that now. Now it says three warnings. Weapon assignments are all that's left. Okay, except for one other thing. Right here on the back, we got one more little fun piece of structural business to do. This Demos tail, which is just awesome. This is what sort of completes the design there, as far as I'm concerned. It looks fantastic. All right, now I'll show you what I did for weapons. On the bottom side here, I go with suppressors, and because it's B-class ship, you have access to the Firebolt 4000 suppressor. So I use those because every now and then there's times when I want to capture ships. And then what I do here is run with the PB100 neutron beam, not the auto ones. And we're going to put four of these on there because you can do four of them in it at the same time. And the reason is because they have a max power of three. So you can actually run four of these weapons at a time. And we're going to run them right over here. Now, note here, this engine, again, doesn't allow you to mount anything on the side. There's supposed to be another Demos wing part coming all the way back to here. We can't do that until we go get the other engine. So we have to wait for a little bit. And then on the bottom side, you don't need these. You can get by completely with four of these neutron beams. They're absolutely nuts. I'll show you in this clip here as I'm battling these these space enemies that um, it just mows through them. But just for fun and giggles, if you want to put a missile launcher on there, I put I put three of these things on here, these B-class ones. These are the eight Atlatl 290B missile launcher. There, I mount one of those up here on top where we put this thing. So then you can go into your weapon slots. And I like to do neutron beams first, missile launcher second, and the suppressor last. And this is excess weapon power. The ship is using too much power for weapons. Reduce weapon count. Okay, so this is really interesting. It was complaining about too much power for weapons. On my other version of the ship, I do have all those missiles on it. We'll take a brief look at it here. But anyway, this is the first step in getting the ship done. Now we need to go to a couple other shipyards to finish it off. So here is this razor leaf, and I have three of these 270 B. Oh, the other ones were 290 Bs. These are 270 Bs. Okay. And you can see, here's the engines that you want. These are the SAE 52220 engines from Slayton Aerospace, and you can only get those at Aquila. And then at Demos, you can see that there's this landing gear right here, the 32 CB landing gear. So let's go do that. And just one more quick note, you can see that if you use the 270B missile launchers, one on top and one each on these sides on the underneath, it doesn't complain about too many weapons. So we're good there. So now we have two different locations we have to go to get the ship upgraded completely. I recommend going to Cheyenne first and getting the engines. And so once again, this is the only place I've been able to find these engines is in Aquila City. So we're going to take and nuke all these engines right here. And if you scroll down far enough, you get to here the SAE 5220. Very nice engine. And you'll notice what's going to happen here. These engines are rock stars. Now we have a mobility of 100 and a top speed of 140. Remember, and we still only have a 16 year light ra light year range. Again, it's fuel thing. I don't, I'm not constrained by that. Now, maybe later in the game, you end up with some distances where you need more light year fuel. And if that's the case, uh, there are some adjustments that can be made to the ship to accommodate for that. But in my particular case, I'm pretty happy with this. So we got the engines on there. We have a huge amount of cargo. We still got 2680, which is really good, and 100% mobility. We got a ton of weapons. Now let's go back to Demos and finish this thing off cosmetically because this landing gear is ugly. So for the Demos stuff, where you want to go is over into the solar system. 
and you want to go over to Mars at the Deimos shipyard. Once you're at Deimos, come talk to this man. And here we're going to finish the last of our Crimson Fleet Ghost. We're going to come over here, and now that you can do things on the side here, we're going to first adjust that with the structural components, the Deimos wing. And the wing you want is the Deimos wing D, and then you want to take it and flip it around so it tapers toward the back. Those are the last two components here on the wing. Very nice, but the more important thing here is the landing gear. So we're going to get rid of this. These big ugly things that don't fit well. It's unfortunate that we can't get those directly from my outpost, but that's okay. Go in here, scroll over to gear and get this. The 32CB landing gear and you can see how it just naturally fits right there. It's the same line right there. That is so great. It makes our ship look a thousand times better. And that is it. That is the exterior of the ship. Let's take a tour, shall we? All right, so here you are on your ship. This is where the landing comes from underneath. Here's your cockpit. We're familiar with this from our other build. You got enough crew stations for four different people, which is great for the first part of the game. It's gonna handle all your core people. To the left, we have the captain. And we have a bed so we can easily rest there and get our XP bonus. We have one of the portal windows here, which is just awesome to look out of. On this side, it's whatever you want. Remember, we've got this little tiny uh, one by one facility and then on the wing, whatever you want to have. In this particular case, we have our workshops. So there's our spacesuit workbench, our weapon workbench and our industrial workbench. And if you wanted to use the Deimos one, there should be a research facility in there. On the other side of the ship. Another portal window. Awesome. Big old cannons there. And we have a little living space here for everybody. Sink. Place to cook. Everybody's getting to hang out at the table there and talk about everything we're doing wrong. And then on this side, here's your research lab. So there's access to your pharmaceutical lab and right here, your research lab. So it's got everything you need and it just looks incredibly badass. Also it makes it really easy because if you want to egress to the Demos shipyard or any other ship that you aboard, it's up top and down below right there, it gets you planet side. Personally, I could not be more happy with how this ship looks and performs as a B-class ship. It's an incredibly attractive design and it's super powerful. We're going to turn our missiles down here, maximize our shields and engines. Let's go find one of these bozos. Oh, they don't like that at all, do they? So there you have it, folks. The Daybreak, courtesy of Probalt from Reddit. If you see him, Give him a thanks for this awesome ship design. This thing is absolutely fantastic as a B-Class. I could not be more thrilled with the way it looks and performs. It's so much fun. This is probably the best part of Starfield, in my opinion, is the ship builder. And I've seen so many awesome and crazy designs. As we get into the C-Class stuff and some really bigger ships with automated turrets, I'll try to throw a design your way here in the coming weeks for that one as well. And I'll also try to get a guide out for some of the uh, quick and dirty outpost building. But in the meantime, go have fun, everyone. Thanks for watching. As usual, if you dig it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your questions and comments down below and consider supporting me through my Patreon, which is listed in the description below. I'll see you all next time. And until then, happy gaming.